I want to thank you first and foremost for coming to say hi and listening to the Kelly Love Show podcast. I've really thought long and hard about how I can deliver support, love, joy, wellness tips, longevity life, feeling grateful, living an extraordinary life to the world. And I know as a mom, an entrepreneur, a healthcare practitioner, that sometimes we've always put ourselves last. And it was only when I took control of my health, I put me first, that I started being able to give more, show up more, feel life again, and truly live that extraordinary life. And that's what I want for you. So I thought it would be the best to just introduce myself and have a fun conversation with you guys to say like, who is this girl? Somebody told me to follow her. I don't know anything about her. So, hey, here I am. Well, first and foremost, I want to tell you one of my greatest gifts and honors and pleasures has been to raise four amazing children. It has been struggles and challenges and joy and laughter and tears and stress <laughs> through the time, but it is the biggest gift that I could be of having the privilege of saying that I'm a mom. And I always thought the love I had for my parents was the same love I would have for my children. And boy, was I wrong. So I'm so, so proud to be the mom of four amazing young adults now. But a little bit about my history is I actually was uh, born and raised in Arizona. I was a Phoenician, kind of that Phoenix Scottsdale area. Thought I um, loved the desert because I spent really growing up there through high school there. And then I went on to Tucson and I got my bachelor's degree at the University of Arizona. After that, I went home back to the Phoenix Valley and really thought, I would probably be there. I, I love the area. I knew the people. It felt familiar. Does that resonate with any of you guys? It felt familiar. But I, through my whole life, was always somebody to take risks, to do my own thing, to not be afraid to challenge, to not have to follow the crowd. I went on to Minnesota and I got my master's in physical therapy at the Mayo Clinic in Rochester, Minnesota. So Holy cow, yes, I went from the hottest place on the planet to one of the coldest places on the planet. Call me crazy, crazy Kelly is what I'm known as, but yes. But my point is that I've never been afraid to do something different, even though I loved feeling comfortable. So my journey as a physical therapist, after I graduated, I moved back to Arizona and started my career um, working in the field of rehabilitation, loving my field. I went on to run hospitals and become an expert in traumatic brain injury and stroke recovery. I then left hospitals and my husband and I had the pleasure of opening up an amazing private practice. We served hundreds of clients. We helped them. We've helped their families. I've taught all over the world and it's been amazing and a blessing. But what I really realized is through all of that, it was seeking the next thing, seeking achievement. And even though I was helping others along the way, I wasn't truly living. I wasn't giving my best life to me. I wasn't filling up my tank. I wasn't really taking care of my children. I wasn't really making sure that I was leading a purpose-driven life. And that's what I want for you guys, right? Is we have successes and we have seasons. And just because you've done something that you've loved and you've done well, doesn't mean you can't take a chance to pivot. So maybe you're somebody who has been in a career and you're like, mm, is it my time to make a move? Is it my time to go back to work because my kids have gone off to college or I'm an empty nester? Is it my time because I've retired from my 30 year career, but I'm not really ready to retire and I really want to do something new. Whatever that is for you, follow your passion because we all need to live this passion full life. I don't know what that is for you, 
but live life on your terms. The other thing I really discovered is I love being that entrepreneur. I love being more in control of my life. And I love having, having this flow of when I need to be mom, I can be more mom and still spend time because even though the kids are getting older, they still need you. Right. But I also love the fact that I can be creative. I can start building my own programs. I can help serving people in different ways, both from living an abundant life of the best health and vibrancy. Cause if we don't have our health so critical, then what do we have? So let me ask you, what are you doing for your life? What are you doing for your wellness? What are you doing for your finances? Because when we're living an abundant life, living an extraordinary life, this extraordinary life encompasses all. And it's not a balance of, I have to balance my work life and my family life and my spiritual life and my community work life and my uh, work with my spouse, things will always ebb and flow. But what I've learned is I need to be true to myself. What I've learned is the more I can be present and serving the people around me in the best capacity, I feel great. And I'm able to do that from a special place deep in my heart. So along the way of everything I've learned, one of the biggest questions that I get is when I did my transformation from my 40s to my 50s, everyone asked, Kelly, what the heck? You're more vibrant, alive, beautiful, joyous now entering your 50s than even in your 40s. What did you do? Well, I will tell you, I was on the hamster wheel. It was get up, get the kids off, go to work, work all day, come home, schlep them to activities, come back, cook dinner, help with homework, maybe spend five minutes with my spouse, maybe, if not, I'm like falling asleep in the bed, getting the kids in bed. And guess what? The next morning, it would repeat. And I thought that's what a full life was. I thought I could wear that really nice badge of busyness. And it was really cool to tell all the moms on the sideline of the soccer field or the football field, oh my gosh, I did this and this and this and this. And somehow it became this competition for who could do more. <laughs> Have you fallen into that? I don't know. But I didn't think I'm that girl. I was that woman. I was that person. But I was. And I really was like, okay, if I don't take care of me, I'm going to end up not feeling great. I already was starting to feel sluggish and brain fog and not sleeping the best and sometimes a little forgetful. And I ate on the go and on the run. And it was just like the next, the next, the next. And I could just do it all. Have you ever felt like you were a superwoman? I just thought I was superwoman. I didn't need to ask for help. I could just do it. How about you? So as I took note and I started slowing down and I started thinking, if I don't fill up my cup, I can't have nothing to pour into others. My family, my community, my friends, people like you. So I took a step back and realized, all right, I wasn't supposed to grind it at the gym or go out and do triathlons and, you know, work out two to three hours a day. I should move and exercise for me. What, what's in my physiology, what my DNA blueprint says, which was, no, that's actually giving me more age-related diseases. I need to slow things down. I didn't want to burn out. So I went into HIIT training and to yoga and doing other practices now, don't get me wrong, running's my jam. You'll never not find me out pounding the pavement, but maybe it's just for two or three miles. And that's my like happy place. I realized what I ate mattered and how I ate mattered and enjoying my food mattered. What I put into my body fuel was information. It mattered. I started making small changes. I started really taking time that when I was with my family, I was with my family. When I was working, I was working. 
but the age today of, you know, our digital world and being so many distractions and everybody thinking they have you at their, you know, fingertips with every message, every notification, every call, every email, you're on, you're on, you're on, you're on. But all that distraction is driving us to have early cognitive decline. And I realized that. So I needed a block schedule. I needed to really be present with my family and the community of what I was doing. I needed to learn to put my digital devices away. That wasn't just for the kids, right? That was for mom too. That was for me. What about you? I also realized that I had friends, I had communities, but not all my friends and not all my communities were positive and uplifting and joyous. I felt like when I was there with the people, it was more like, oh my God, yeah, yeah. And you too, and you too. And oh my gosh, it was kind of more about complaining and what people called this girlfriending, right? Chatting, but it wasn't positive. And then it was so important for me to put myself around like-minded individuals, around positive people, around people I was learning from, around people that I wanted to be like, because they, they say that you become most like the top five people you hang around with. So who are you hanging around with? I have poured myself over the past 10 years into personal development, learning about myself, learning about communication, reading books, being an avid listener so that I can be the best version of me. I've joined masterminds. I've joined businesses of health-minded people that want to have great business standards. And in this transition from 40 to 50, I've become the person who I am. And so when people have been asking, Kelly, what did you do? I want to bring my goods to you. I want to share what has worked for me and what maybe can work for you. And I also am going to bring you in some other people in this world that I know can light you up, can pour into you. And I have a couple of key guests that are going to be with me on a regular basis. And then I'll always have some amazing people that I just feel like, oh, you got to have this person in your life like I have in mine. So I hope you feel you got a little bit more connection about who Kelly is, who I serve, and weekly, we can just have a few chats. And if there's anything that you're ever like, I would love to learn more. How did you learn this? What did you do with this? How did you dial on this? I don't know anything about this. I will bring you that information because I've done my research. And if I don't know, guess what? I'll bring in an expert who does. So I wanted to introduce myself. I wanted to let you guys know what you're going to receive here. We're going to have fun because life is, is uh, too short to not have fun. So first and foremost, we're going to have fun. Are you in? You want to have fun as well? I tell you, walking in a room, smiling, feeling that energetic energy, just light us up inside is just so amazing. So some of you may be watching, some of you may be just listening, but wherever you are, I still know you feel my energy. So I appreciate you. And I really hope that I've served you and I really hope I can continue to serve. So thank you for being part of my community. I love you very much. You guys are absolutely the best. And if you feel one of these episodes can serve somebody that you love, I would love for you to share more. So with that, welcome to the Kelly Love Show podcast. <laughs>